This video is sponsored by the A to Z of van life. back to another one of our van conversion chats uh, and so here comes another story time so uh, this week we've been doing some serious hill climbs and you know roaring up and down these uh, not suitable for vans track you know four by four so uh, I'm fully convinced that our van Melanie is a Land Rover oh, because, she is. because she has done some super duper off-roading and there's going to be a vlog coming uh, up to actually share more details about those. But today we thought that we should really talk about and emphasize how important um, your van, you know, your camper van weight is and um, how much if you are heavier than that and how much of a limiting factor that is both in your build but also when you start doing van life if you're heavier than you ought to be uh, or you're just he a heavy vehicle then that really limits where you can go. Because I'm convinced that we wouldn't have made it up some of those hills if our van had been overweight. We just left our van and camera over there, you know, started walking away from it. <gasps> Is that a hole, sweetie? Please don't go in it. Don't go in it. All right. So what we mean by camper van weight limit is that most panel vans have a limit of three and a half tons. The van fully loaded is not allowed to weigh more than three and a half tons. And that includes the weight of the vehicle itself as well. So when we weighed our vehicle, when it was completely empty, it was about 2.2 tons without us in it. So I think we had about 800 to 1,000 kilograms uh, of weight to work with to build our house. That's the entire thing, the insulation, the wood, the cladding, all the bits and pieces, the food, our clothing, everything, water as yeah. well. Everything and was like, included from, in that limit. From that perspective, you know, just an empty van, you know, you have all the space and you have a thousand kilograms to go, you think, that's plenty, right? You know, kind of, we were aware that the weight was a thing. So we kept picking sort of like the materials, uh, you know, thinking it's going to be okay and light, en uh, light enough. It didn't go that way. So about a third way through our van build, we went to weigh the van again. So at this point there was some insulation, some, uh, uh, you know, flooring, framing. So, you know, kind of the, the skeleton of the van was going on. You're like, okay, well, you know, it should be around x amount of weight i don't remember how much we said then and uh, but i do remember that we were at least 200 kil kilograms over our estimate and we were like so that was a wake-up call for us that we were although taking the weight seriously we weren't taking it seriously enough that led to some major redesigns of our layout which we actually discussed in uh, another video uh, recently so i think like four weeks ago we talked about uh, what things we changed in our van layout and why some things had to be cut out well spoiler alert weight was a huge um, consideration in what went into the layout and what didn't um, so this video is really about trying to uh, shine some light and perspective on how much things weigh and why is it really important to uh, know that stick to that and um, like, no, know how much your van weighs because there's a lot of signs in Europe saying, you know, vehicle no heavier than two ton, you know, it's like, or 1.5 ton in some places. You know, most places the limit is like five to seven and a half ton roads, uh, but there are roads with much lower weight limits because things are old in Europe, so they, you know, keep them. Oh, oh sweetie, are you okay? I think she's fine. I'll go check. She stumbled. It's 
Okay, anyway, while Sam is de-traumatizing the cat, um, a quickie announcement. Um, today is the release of Workshop 5 from our van conversion boot camp, the one that's been running this entire month. So there's workshops on, you know, planning layout, electrics, plumbing, heating. And uh, today we're releasing Workshop 5, which is on van build best practices and mistakes, which was really fun to film. And if you're a, a novice a van lifer in, um, you know, DOI van converter, um, then it can be a really, really helpful resource uh, to, you know, help you along and not mess up too bad. <laughs> you know, there's plenty of mistakes out there. So we're just going to share a few so you can make your own and not have to make hours, you know, you know how it goes. Yeah. So yeah, the link for that is down below. And remember, there's a 15% off uh, uh, discount if you want to buy the whole van conversion bundle. Oh. If you're oh. only interested in one, in one, you don't have to buy all of them. You can just get, you know, the one you need. Or if you want all of them, it's 15% off. Does that make sense? Anyway, so anyway, I'll give you over to Sam. So before we get into everything, I wanted to basically have a chat about why specifically that three and a half ton limit is such an important consideration when it comes to building your van. So the three and a half ton limit, first of all, is a legal limit. Your van is not allowed to weigh more than that. Otherwise you will get fined. You can uprate these vans so you can fit better suspension and basically get them reclassified so they can handle, I think it's 4.2 tons but the three and a half ton limit is important for several big reasons. So number one, uh, in the UK and most of Europe, driver's licenses, if you passed your test after 1997, you can't actually drive any vehicle that's over three and a half ton unless you essentially do a C1 license, so for trucks and stuff, and only then can you then drive vehicles that are over three and a half tons. So that's a big reason number one. Uh, secondly, in terms of tolls for ferries and toll roads and things like that, being under three and a half ton generally means that you're in a like a van classification when it comes to ferries and toll roads. But if you go over three and a half ton, then you're basically in the next tier up. And that next tier up, especially for ferries and toll bridges, can get really expensive. For example, there's the toll bridge between Denmark and Sweden, which I think for a van is about 80 pounds, but for a truck is about 200. And if you imagine that every time you want to go on a big toll bridge or a ferry or a toll road and things like that, you can imagine that being over three and a half ton will get pretty expensive pretty quickly. And then the third important reason, let's say none of those really bother you, is that the MPG, the fuel efficiency of your vehicle, will decrease and this also means that your van will wear out quicker. So these vans are rated for three and a half ton and some of them essentially have the chassis that can handle 4.2 or even five tons but the engine, the more weight that that engine is towing around constantly because obviously if you build a camper van it's going to be weighing that much all the time. That means that that van's engine is going to be towing a lot of weight all the time, which basically means that the suspension, the engine, or the belts, the alternators, things like that are all going to be wearing out much quicker, which means they're going to be replaced more often. Uh, and that also ends up costing you more money. So that's a really big reason as to why this three and a half ton weight limit is such an important factor when it comes to building your van. And that's why, I guess, after that wake-up call, we took things so seriously where we were like, okay, we need to do something about this. Yeah, so we ended up with three mil walls. <laughs> They're fine, they didn't break. I suppose context. Come, come closer, come closer. Yeah. There you go. Okay, so the big stuff are water tanks. If you have a 100 litre water tank, you're adding 100 kilos straight away to your van. The more water you have in your van, the heavier it's going to be. That's a pretty obvious one. Then it comes all the hidden stuff, not the furniture, the walls. The walls and the floor are these little heavy bomb shells of mass that, um, you know, you've put all, all, all these months of work into it um, uh, and everything's done and functioning. You close it up and then you have to build your house. But by that point, if you haven't actually thought about the weight, you could have loaded so much weight into the walls, floor and ceiling that you don't have more than 200 kilos to do the rest of your furniture. And not to mention that you need to put your stuff in the van. So, you know, your plates, your clothes, your shoes, whatever, that takes weight as well. Not, and also if you do like hiking gear or your canoe or whatever, you know, you need weight for that. 
and all of them weigh a lot more than you imagine. As a general rule, for a long wheelbase uh, van, like a Sprinter or a Crafter sort of length, or that would be an extra long wheelbase uh, sort of Fiat, Peugeot and Boxer, if you, if you get my drift, um, uh, the amount of material that the, uh, goes into it, if you were to build um, the floor and the walls out of like 9 to 12 uh, mil ply, then the rough weight distribution will be uh, like this. 100 kilograms for the wall cladding, uh, 100 kilograms for the floor, and another, you know, 80 to 100 on the ceiling, if you were to do it out of 9 to 12 mil ply. Our walls with our 3 mil poplar ply weigh 40 kilos on the wall cladding, 25 kilos for the ceiling and about 50 for the floor because the floor is out of 9 mil ply but it's not the full um it's not all 9 mil ply all around it's just where we step is 9 mil ply so changing the material was a big big change the next thing you have to consider is the insulation the insulation is also another 50 kilos so i don't know it's like another 30 kilos on the floor because it's only 25 uh, uh, mil thick uh, PRR board. On the walls there's 50 mil, so that's another 50 kilograms. Yeah, we're up to about 500 kilograms already and all you've done is put in insulation and a wall. Technically there's nothing built in the van yeah. yet. You, it's just an empty room. Imagine an empty room and you've already taken half of your 1000 kilograms. And that's before we account for the water tanks and things like that, as Polly said, that's an extra 100 kilograms straight off the bat. So now you're left with like 400, 300 kilograms to build the entire rest of your van. All the batteries, all the plumbing, all the furniture, the shower room, everything like that has to then be built on the weight limit of like three to 400 kilograms. All right, so how do we solve all of this? Cause it was, it was rather a, suffocating uh, realization and, exp and experience it, it really put a twist in our toga so to speak um uh, we had to sacrifice our murphy bed idea and uh, we also did weird stuff with our floor to try and cut um uh, material and another big uh, technique that we used was um uh, we didn't really build kind of the furniture fully like we cut legs our couch has only three legs holding the, it up the rest is l brackets <laughs> the rest is just attached to the walls um uh, which you know you might think oh that that's of course that that's easy but you know the standard way the easiest way to build something is you know you build the um uh, the, fr the whole furniture unit outside and then you bring it in and you then secure it to the floor but to make it like freestanding outside the van you actually put more material than you need to in order to make it structurally sound. Another way that we also used is from some of the furniture especially some of the really weight bearing furniture like the back bench and the couch mm -hmm. we actually ended up using aluminium yes. like aluminium box frame to build some mm -hmm. of it rather than thick wood because although aluminium was harder to work with because you need to drill through it to screw things yeah. in and it is more expensive and it is more expensive first of all we were buying aluminium mm -hmm. for the roof deck and the solar panels and mm -hmm. all of that anyway so we kind of ordered extra mm -hmm. in that one big order um, but secondly it was really worth it because we could get away with using less material that was stronger mm -hmm. and that could support the weight and needed less supports all around because the yeah. aluminium for the back bench is literally two pieces of aluminium L bracketed into the side of the van with riv nuts and then one leg in the middle and that's it. We experimented a lot, um, a lot like the three mil poplar ply walls, they were an experiment, we were like okay if it doesn't work it doesn't work we'll figure something out but if it does we saved ourselves like 60 kilograms and yeah. that relaxed us a lot more <laughs> um, uh, you know because all of this weight visualization you have to visualize how you're going to build things, um, uh, have to calculate the like the density the mass of uh, different materials in order to know you know compare is the aluminium worth it, how much weight is it really going to save us the way our couch, couch is built now um it saved us about eight kilograms i think so yeah. all the sacrifices that we made in terms of um the materials that we pulled away from the couch uh you know so we limited the amount of material we changed changed the, the cladding of the couch to the three mil poplar ply uh mm -hmm. reduced it by eight kilograms and you know be like well just, just that's just eight kilograms uh, you know it's not that big of a deal but if you save eight kilograms on every piece of furniture you put in the van you can probably save 50 to 100 kilograms mm -hmm. across all your furniture 
which would then make it worth it. Yeah. yeah. And obviously, uh, we added the cats to uh, the, 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 the weight count. You know, that's uh, three and a half kilos per cat. And there you go. The weight saved on the couch allowed us to fit two cats into the van. So, you know, it's a trade-off. Yeah. Um, uh, and actually something else, after we've built the van mm -hmm. and anything that we added to it after building mm -hmm. the van, then had to be weighed up with, okay, so if we're Sweeties, can we not lick each other's butt on the camera? Thank you. Come on. Oh, they perfectly positioned themselves into the shot. Ay, ay, ay. What I, was I, I saying? I was just praising how lovely you are to live with. Uh -huh. I don't know, I forgot what you were saying. Yes, that was... So, yeah, as I was saying, anything that we added to the van after we'd built it needed to be taken into consideration of okay so if we're adding this that's going to add more weight mm -hmm. so then what do we need to remove because originally we had a double swivel seat at the front that weighed 30 kilograms in the metal plates that it was mm. was that worth it for what we were using it for because we barely used it at all the answer yeah. was no so when we did the water tank upgrade and stuff yeah. we removed that double swivel plate because mm -hmm. we didn't want that weight yeah, to the, basically counterbalance the whole thing with, with, with the, the weight and even even not, not just with the weight it's it's also what you put in the van and how much space it, 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 it takes like how much volume a certain feature is going to take it's actually very often a balancing act you're you're always calculating um the the the, the trade-off you're constantly thinking about the currency of space and the currency of weight and rather an interesting thing with this coverage um it's not volume that takes up the most space is functionality and what i mean by that is you can have vans that look very um cluttered up tiny corridors they may look all fancied up but you don't really have that much functionality in them uh you can't even move it's just kind of a hotel room uh, if you were to rent a manufactured camper van that's kind of the feeling that you get you know it's kind of all, all sh shiny and show but not entirely as functional as uh, it, it can be for contrast our van as you saw is very open space um frankly it, you may think it's like feather light um for the amount of space it has but the places that there is furniture they're so like dense they they they, they have so, so, so many functions you can open things up there's uh, hidden ways to get into places it's kind of like a chinese puzzle box the whole thing mm -hmm. uh, you know there's a lot of functionality into it like one piece of furniture can do three things each functionality needs like an extra piece of wood or a rail or some latch or something and when you add them all together they do way more and more so one example recently that we actually did when it comes to weight and adding something extra to the van mm -hmm. was our battery upgrades so if you don't already know I'll leave a link in the top corner and down below but essentially we upgraded our batteries from 200 amp hours of lithium to 920 amp hours of lithium which added about 40 to 50 kilograms of weight to the van mm -hmm. now in exchange for this 40 to 50 kilograms we were looking what can we remove from the van that would basically that doesn't really serve a purpose anymore for us um, or it wasn't as um, useful as we thought it would basically, be. Basically, the weight that it takes up is not worth it. Yeah. And what we decided was the deck. So if you remember, we installed a deck right up there on our van. It was made out of plywood and aluminium and everything, and that weighed 50 kilograms. Pretty much exactly the same weight as the batteries we've just added. So actually we managed to upgrade our battery capacity without sacrificing any more weight and we didn't and had we not done that we technically <laughs> might need to upgrade the van so it was actually a big um, a bonus that we could get rid of the deck and I was actually quite happy at that point that we didn't use it that much and we didn't because you know it, it takes some effort to climb onto the roof and then kind of enjoy enjoy the, the uh, our, our time on there um, and you I'm kind of constantly worried that something's gonna fall off if you happen to be at the beginning of your van build and you're wondering about you know mistakes and what to do and what not to do then our van conversion workshop uh, on best practices and mistakes is a really good resource for you to uh, nip some ideas uh, and ask uh, any questions that, that, that you have because there's so much information that this 
we cannot possibly fit it in a 15 20 minute video here on youtube so that's why we created that um uh, that workshop actually we created the whole uh, van conversion boot camp just so you know it's a, it's an excellent stepping stone for the novice diy uh, van builder uh hopefully like yourself so if you are looking for for all of that the uh workshop five is uh running and the entire van conversion boot camp bundle is available for 15 percent off for all the topics that we've done so far so that link will also be down in the description yeah so if you're looking for anything like that then that's available down below for you and make sure that you don't miss it out um, and if you'd like us to do more of these uh, story times and Q&A answers here on YouTube then leave your questions down below as well oh I'm falling ah, walking uphill well the cats are Woo. wandering off they're, they're, they're off well yeah this is, this is their hill their hill they rule